Okay, so I am honored to be here uh, after the Georgetown prayer breakfast where Mr. Charlie Duke, uh, thank you, Charlie, for your inspiring testimony and what you had to offer today was quite amazing. So I am happy you gave me the opportunity to sit and talk with you for a few moments here. Well, it's my pleasure, Keisha. Thank you very much. And we just enjoyed your rendition of the Star Spangled Banner, thank verses you. one and two. Thank you so much. It was just really inspiring. Thank you. Well, for those who are not familiar with your work, uh, Charlie Duke, for Brigadier General, I uh, served at Ap Apollo, NASA, and was flew as the lunar uh, module pilot on the Apollo 16 mission. That's very exciting. And I want you to, um, I had a, just a few questions for you uh, about that. I want to keep it, I know you had a chance, you've spoken a lot about what you, the experience you had, all of the rocks you had to pick up. But I think I want to focus on how we inspire a younger generation. Uh, someone mentioned at the event that we have the Artemis program and we're planning to send the first woman, the next man back to the moon by 2024. With Apollo, President John F. Kennedy organized a national mission. Uh, with Artemis, that was a vision under President Donald Trump. Now, what do you see as the importance of a national mission and in inspiring a new generation of younger people to get involved in space? Well, I think it's very important that we uh, uh, encourage young people to do their best uh, and to get involved in what I call uh, science, technology, engineering, math, the courses that really are the foundation of a, of a good uh, education. Uh, and uh, whether it be liberal arts, whether it be engineering, uh, and to encourage our young people to, uh, uh, to think ahead and to, and to dream. Mm -hmm. uh, I sign a lot of pictures, dream big. Mm -hmm. And so it's uh, very important, or, or aim high. And uh, so I, I, I speak to the younger people uh, to encourage them to take care of yourself, uh, study hard, manage your time, all of the things that you need to learn as you're growing up uh, to fulfill a, uh, a satisfying career. And uh, hopefully they'll, it'll be encouraging them to, uh, uh, to study these courses that will carry us on to that next generation. Uh, hmm. As I said in my talk this morning, uh, my dad, born in 1907, could hardly believe that his son went to the moon. But my youngest son uh, didn't. He just took it for granted. And that's good at it. That's not a bad uh, position to take, if you will. But he applied that he took it for granted. But the mountains we climb, we take the next generation. They can see longer to that, to that next hill over there. And I want to reach that hill. So mm -hmm. I think that's what I try to do in my career is to encourage young people just Pick something you like, study hard, and and the sky's the limit. Excellent. Yes, that's really important, um, especially for the young people today. They need a, mm -hmm. a vision, a mission. Uh, and so I know we just actually landed the Perseverance rover on Mars mm -hmm. as a part of the Artemis program. Uh, it's not just to return American astronauts to the moon, but to develop a presence for the platform for going on to Mars, to eventually having human presence on Mars. So I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Um, one of the things that the organization, the Lourdes Track I work with, they, we've been focusing on the question of nuclear propulsion. Mm -hmm. um, and because obviously when we start to send human beings to Mars, you're going to have to think about what type of propulsion yeah. system. So. Uh, I wanted to see what do you think it's going to take for us to be prepared once we're ready for that mission? Well, uh, I, I remember back when I was at NASA a long time ago in the 70s, we had a nuclear uh, uh, engine development program, and I don't remember the name of it, but it was, uh, uh, it was a, a big program, but NASA decided to cancel it. 
And, uh, but there's a, a former astronaut uh, that has a company called, uh, an engine company, I can't remember the name of it. Are you, I, I believe it's the ion, uh, yes. ion engine. He's developing this ion engine. Which, yes, yes. Uh, and uh, John Diaz, John, D yeah, John Franklin Diaz, he, uh, he's a, a, a friend, and uh, excellent. And I currently, and so uh, he's had a, I mean, very dedicated to this development, mm -hmm. and, I gonna, right. and I think it's going to, and I think it's going to be uh, important to have something like that that you can accelerate slowly and then turn around and decelerate. And, mm -hmm. uh, so it will. Uh, it would be. It would be helpful uh, to have a nuclear engine. Uh, I mean, the fuel fuel systems are don't have to carry tons and tons and tons of, of liquid propellant like we did on Apollo. So it would be. Uh, it would be exciting to see that develop, and I think we're going to do that eventually. You look at aviation today and at uh, uh, the power plants and the future and stuff like that. Very hydrogen good. engines. Mm -hmm. Now you were the backup uh, lunar module pilot. You were going to be the backup lunar module pilot for the Apollo 13. Right. And uh, I know that it was a point on your mission of Apollo 16 where this question of failure is not an option and everybody coming in uh, in mission control and making sure that your your mission of Apollo 16 was a success because you almost had to abort and come back home. Mm -hmm. uh, what what did you, what happened in terms of people coming together and what made that mission a, a success and able to move forward? On Apollo 13, uh, 16, uh, we had this problem behind the behind the moon where the main engine control system. For the command module, uh, the secondary system was out, and it and it was uh, the idea is to center the engine and then use that control system to move the engine to steer the spacecraft. Mm. And the mission rule was if we had two uh, systems, and if you lose one, that was an abort. Now you're down to one system, and so you need to we need to think about coming home. We were an hour before landing. And so you can imagine how disappointed John and I were. Uh, and uh, I, uh, TK Mattingly, uh, the same, you know, and uh, oh man, this, we're not going to get the, the land. Uh, and so we were uh, frustrated, to say the least. Uh, but we told Mission Control, and they said, stand by, guys, we'll look at it. Well, thanks to Mission Control, it took them four hours, but they figured out what was wrong. We can't fix it, but we here's a workaround. This is what you do, and it's gonna and it's gonna work by using the rock reaction control systems. And we've tested it in the simulator, and it works. Uh, and uh, so you go for landing. Well, <laughs> you can imagine the, the the attitude change in our spacecraft. And, and this was two hours before we we were just about to disappear behind the moon and land on the next time around. So when they gave us a go, and uh, so we were very excited. But it just shows the teamwork, uh, Keisha, and that was true of all of Apollo. Uh, mission Control was uh, focused on success. Uh, we were focused on success, and it was mm -hmm. uh, not much wringing of hands, you know, oh my God, we've lost this one. But it was, what can we do to can we get it fixed so that we can go? And uh, they did on our flight. And uh, I'm eternally grateful for Mission Control for all of their hard. It started when they looked at the data that we sent back. Some engineers said, well, that looks like the data we did at Tullahoma, Tennessee when we tested that engine. And before we ignited that engine, we cut the feedback loop. And so the engine, the computer was looking for the position of the engine and it was trying to center itself, but there was no feedback. But when you think about it, you got a round engine and you light the engine and the pressure equalizes and the engine's gonna go boop, center up itself. Right. And then you can use the reaction control jets to control it, the direction. Hmm. Not move the engine, but move the spacecraft. And he said, what? why don't we just use that as a backup? And uh, 
That's what Man on Lake. And, yeah. Yeah. And so uh -huh. that's what he, he didn't have to do that because the primary system actually worked both times he fired the engine. But uh, he had to uh, depend on the, the workaround to get in case the primary system went out. And so we were uh, go for landing. And, but that, that that's the, shows the ingenuity and the attitude of mission control is we're focused on success. And if we can't make it, then we're going to be focused on how to get back safely. Right. That's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, we have your book here. Uh, just want to tell people Moonwalker. Yeah. They should get a copy of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you and your wife uh, participate, wrote this book together on uh, your life walk and experience. And well, I, I actually I told the stories that are in the book, and she wrote the book. Are she you? put it all together, <laughs> prayed a lot about it, and uh, last four chapters about our Christian faith. And uh, it's been out a long time, but uh, we still publish it. And uh, so people want to buy it, they could uh, uh, either write us, uh, email us, and order a copy, or do it through a Duke Ministry for Christ website. Okay, we got that. Okay. Thank you so much. It's sure. been an honor, and um, thank you for your inspiration to so many young people and, and others. And, and I think we can really uh, move forward with the uh, our continued commitment to exploration, to space exploration. I agree. And I just, to all of the young people watching this, if you're a student, uh, uh, to, I already said it once, that it's just uh, uh, take care of yourself, study hard, do the best you can. Uh, Two short phrases, dream big and aim high, and you never know where uh, you'll end up. So God bless you all. Thank you. God bless you. That's Thank awesome. you very much. Keisha drove up from Houston with her husband Ian. She is a great singer. I'm going to enjoy this version of the national anthem. She's also a huge advocate for space exploration, so I'm sure she's looking forward to listening to the gentleman who's comments. So, and please stand and we'll be singing two verses of the National Anthem.